Greetings in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I am Pastor Calvin Mills of the Church of God Holiness in Barbers Bay and it's always my pleasure to have this great window of opportunity to share God's word with you on beautiful JTV. Call a friend and tell them tune in. The broadcast is on the air. God have a word in store for your friend, your family, yourself and I today. Hallelujah. Amen. Before I get into that word, let me just acquaint you with our schedule at the Church of God Holiness in Bogus Bay. You can join us every Sunday at 7 o'clock for sunrise service, Sunday school at 10, our second morning worship at 11, and our Sunday evening Bible study at 6.30 p.m. And coming up, amen, pretty soon we will be dealing with a study entitled, amen, True Discipleship. So we hope you will be a part of that study with us. Hallelujah. Today I'm in directing your attention back to the book of Revelation. It seems to be the place God will have us to minister to the territory from today. Amen. Revelation chapter number 3, where we were last. Amen. Same chapter, same context, certainly not the same message. Be prepared to receive. It is noted there are three spiritual temperatures. Amen. A burning heart, a cold heart, and a lukewarm heart. Now we are familiar with hot or cold, but there is something called lukewarm, neither hot nor cold. Amen. What are the spiritual implications of these temperatures? Which of them does the Lord prefer? And which, if any, does he abhor? Well, my friend, the spiritual implications of the three temperatures, the Lord's preference and abhorrence of them are revealed to us in Revelation chapter 3. I'm reading the 14th through the 16th verses and the 19th verse. Hear God's word. And unto the angel of the church of the Laodiceans write, These things saith the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would thou wert cold or hot. So then, because thou art lukewarm, and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. Amen. I will spew thee out of my mouth. The 19th verse, And as many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. Amen. Father, we love you. We thank you for this opportunity to share your wonderful word. We pray that your word will go forth in the power of the Holy Spirit, convicting hearts and drawing men back to you. We pray, O oh God, that anyone that are lukewarm, that is watching this program, Lord, they will seek to get on fire for you because you certainly will not accept them in a lukewarm state. Minister, as only you can, through your word and through your spirit. This we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. I have chosen to entitle this message, Hot or Cold. Now I spoke to you about three temperatures. Amen. In the hot, the cold, and if you want to put it in another term, the in-between. Uh, the neither hot nor cold. Amen. But the message is hot are cold. We note first of all the Lord's desire. The Lord's desire. I would that thou was hot or cold. That is his desire that we be one or the other. Amen. Speak. Keep in mind, he's preferring you are two out of the three temperatures. He can deal with two. The third he can't deal with it. He will not tolerate it for long. Think about that. Let's look at the cold temperature. Amen. And of course, based on the Greek rendering, it means cold to the point of freezing. Yes, cold represents the sincere unbeliever without pretense concerning his relationship to God. You know, there are some people that just know that they don't have it and they don't pretend to have it. They know that they are not Christians, they are not saved, and they will not profess to be that which they are not. They are cold, they are playing out cold, and they will admit that they are. Cold, disconnected, disjointed, 
and they don't have the life of God in them. Jesus said, I can deal with that person because I know how to get in touch with their heart. I know how to get them inspired, to hook up, get the connection that will start the spark in their lives that will bring the fire of God in their spirits. I would that you be cold or hot. Note the second temperature, hot. Amen. Now, if cold was to the point of freezing, hot is to the point of boiling. Yes, God wants, amen, those that know him, he wants our temperature to be to the boiling point. Hallelujah. This is the temperature that Jesus expects in the lives of his devoted followers. Amen. God is a God of fire. The scripture say he is a consuming fire. And God wants a people of a burning heart, amen, to be his devoted followers, amen, to worship him with fire in their hearts and passion in their spirits, amen. He wants our affection for him to be to the boiling point. Well, let me tease you a little bit. If people who claim to be quote-unquote in love, you know, they want to feel the heat and feel the fire. Nobody wants to feel no dead coal hands and no dead coal hug. Come on now, you want hot intimacy. Am I talking the truth here? So when it comes to God, he don't want cold, lifeless, dead, dry, religious worship that is not worship at all. He wants the worship that flows out of a heart set ablaze on fire by the word of God, by the Holy Spirit, and it has ignited, amen, passionate love within us, and we express it to God first of all and to our fellow men in love. So God wants us to be enthusiastic and energetic in our devotion to him. You know, there's some people, they're young, yes, in the physical, they're full of life, but when it comes to God, they seem like a dead man walking. They have no passion, no zeal, no fire whatsoever. But when Jesus came on the scene, he said, the zeal of thine house has eaten me up. My, my, my. Oh, my friend, I enjoy worshiping God with hot, burning enthusiasm. I have tried to keep cool for 30 years and have failed every time. Why? When the fire of God is on the altar of your heart, you cannot keep quiet no matter how much you try. You cannot be dead no matter how you might pretend. You cannot be cold because the, the temperature is always up. And by now you know me, the kind of preacher I am. I don't brag, but that's just who I am. Amen. I will get started in a mindset. I'm just keep it cool like the other side of the pillow, as my friend on, on uh, ESPN says. But my friend, I can't keep it cool for long because before long, the enthusiasm begins to burn into a blaze. And before you know it, fire gone and man is a blaze for God. But that's nothing to be ashamed of. For he don't want me to give a cold, dead book sermon like the letter that killeth. No, he want me to speak out of the spirit that giveth life. Amen. So God wants us to be enthusiastic. Amen. Entheos, God in you. And when God is in you, you can't be cold. When God is in you, you can't be lukewarm. When God is in you, you can't be dead, dry, and dull, having no joy, having no exuberance about you. When God is in you, you will burn. Now, I didn't say you'll burn up, you know. I say you will burn. I'm not talking about having a fever. I'm talking about having a fire. And that fire comes from the Spirit of God Almighty. I would that you be either hot or cold. Amen. Revelation chapter 12 and the 11 verse says, Don't be lazy in showing your devotion. Use your energy to serve the Lord. Now, I no doubt might be addressing somebody today. You know, when it comes to basketball, you show your emotions, you're full of fire, you jump out of your seat, 
you know, you leap when you see that dunk or that ramajama, whatever it is, that kiss the rim, whatever you call it. You are excited and you are not ashamed to show that you're rooting for Laga. I'm sorry, LeBron. I call him Lagan, you know, no disrespect. But uh, uh, you are rooting for the heat, yeah, and you are on fire for the heat. But when it comes to God, there are people that claim to know God and you look at them and it's like, man, alive. When did the power go out? How long has it been gone? You were like, when, you know, the BVI electricity cop shut down power and there's no life, there's no light, there is no brightness, nothing but dimness, dullness, dryness. Oh, my friend, come on. Don't be lazy in showing your devotion. Use your energy to serve God. I like to serve God with energy. I don't like to act like I'm weak and, and I don't have strength and I don't have power and I don't have vigor and I don't have fire. Amen. I believe this thing calls for energetic service. Hallelujah. And the key is, is to get the fire of God on the altar of your heart. I would that you be either hot or cold. Amen. But let's note, secondly, the Lord's diagnosis. We know his desire. And of course, his desire of desires is that you be hot. That means that you be connected to him, that you have his life in your heart, in that your heart be set ablaze by his Holy Spirit. That is his ultimate desire for us as humanity. Now, he can deal with a person who is cold to the point of freezing because that person is not pretending. That person is not trying to please him on one hand and please the devil on the next or hold him in one hand and hold the wall in the next. That person is being honest. I'm not saved. I don't know God. I don't have a relationship with him and I'm not hiding it. Are you hearing me? God said, I can deal with that person because I know how to turn him on. Yeah, yeah, don't, don't, get, don't get confused with the statement, turn on. Yeah, my friend, people turn on to the flesh. People turn on to that guy and that woman. I'm talking about God turning you on, getting you excited, amen, for a connection with him, for a relationship with him, and one that will not be for a season, but one that will be forever. Let's note, secondly, the Lord's diagnosis. Amen. He said, I would that you be hot or cold, but thou art neither hot nor cold. Hey, I would that you be either, but you are neither. Think about that. You are neither hot nor cold. The truth of the matter is there are many who seek to be in between us. In between us. Or in another word, they seek to be neutral, neither for nor against. Oh, my friend, the truth is, my friend, the one impossible attitude of Christianity is neutrality. When it comes to Christianity, according to Barclay, you cannot be neutral. You're either for God or you're against him. You either, amen, he's either in you or he's outside of you. You're either on the devil's side or you're on the Lord's side. You either represent light or you represent darkness. There is no in-between or neutrality when it comes to God. But we find that there are some people like back in the heathens who didn't want the gods to be angry. So they tried to please everybody at the same time. Uh, my mind always goes back, go back to R.W. Shambach who met a man with a bunch of chains around his neck and there was something for Buddha, there was something for Krishna, there was something for Rastafari, there was something for all sorts of different religions. And when he looked at me, the man responded, I believe. <laughs> and Brother Shambach said, believe in, in what with all those things hanging around your neck? And the man responded to R.W. Shambach Shamba by saying, Hey man, this point in my life, I can't afford to make anybody mad. And there's some of you, you don't want to make the devil mad by leaving him. You don't want to make God mad, so you try to give him some time on Sunday or Saturday. But you are trying to be an in-betweener. You don't want to be totally against the devil. You don't want to be totally against God, so you want to be partially for the devil and partially for God. Uh, you know, we can be partial. But when it comes to God, you're either with him or you're not with him. You're either for him or you are against him. Neutral, you cannot be. Are you hearing me? The Lord's report from his diagnosis is, Thou art lukewarm in the 16th verse. Amen. You are lukewarm. They had a, a form of religion, but no real commitment or power. 
Oh, my friend, no doubt this represents many congregations of the age we are living in today. They have a form of godliness, but they deny the power to live holy. Yes, they might do a lot of things. They give to charity. They give to missions. They, 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 they feed the poor. They pass out food to the hungry. They help build homes. And that is good. That is commendable. But my friend, if we do that because we are shamming it and because we are faking a relationship with God, he knows our heart. He said, you are lukewarm. You are neither hot nor cold. And there are some symptoms of lukewarmness that I need to bring you up to speed with. Because when you're neither hot nor cold, it, it's a symptom that you just can't deal with. Now, yesterday, uh, sometime this past week, amen, I find my stomach was boiling. And I wonder why was my stomach boiling? I know it's gastritis. What it, why is my, my inside so uneasy? Only thinking back to the root cause, amen, that give way to the boiling effect in my stomach was that I drank some lukewarm water to take some vitamins. <laughs> it was boiled water on the stove. I felt it cool enough. But when I drank it, it was neither hot nor cold. And guess what? It boiled. It upturned my stomach. The only thing I didn't do is puke. Are you hearing me? Ah, so I experience physically what the Lord is expressing to us here spiritually in the Word. Some of the symptoms of lukewarmness, outward profession without the internal presence of Christ. Amen. Now, Gomaki Arthur brought that out. Outward profession without the internal presence of Christ. You know, there are a lot of us can profess to know God. We have an outward show. We know how to gr have the grin on our forehead. We know how to, you know, we know how to put a certain look on our face. We know how to raise the hand. We know how to act spiritual. We know how to say glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And we talk about the anointing. But a lot of us know how to sham it. We know how to fake it. And I know in network marketing, there is a failure philosophy that says fake it till you make it but i once preach a message you cannot fake it and make it when it comes to god you either are it or you are not amen you're either with it or you're not with it you cannot fake it until you make it you got to get it are you hearing me today amen there's religious form without spiritual fire and there's a lot of churches and individuals like that today they have the form Yes, they know how to have the invocation. Yes, and they know how to have two or three hymns. And yes, they know how to read the Bible. And they know how to have a pastoral prayer. And we go through all of that. The farm, but we don't have the fire. Oh, my friend, let me remind you that the church was bought at Pentecost and it was bought in fire. Glory to God. The Bible said cloven tongues as of fire sat upon them. My friend, the church was bought in fire to be a church on fire. What has happened to the modern day church? We have become religiously cute, my friend, and we have our forms and our fashions, but we have not the fire of God because we are called and indifferent in our relationship with God. Are you hearing me? Religious form without spiritual fire. Lord have mercy. Another symptom of lukewarmness is glorying in self and not in the Lord. Now the Bible says, let him who glory, let him glory in the Lord. That's what the word of God says. We are not to glory in ourselves or boast of ourselves. When Peter and John were going up to the temple and they met the man begging for arms at the beautiful gate, amen, and Peter said, silver and gold have I none but such that I have, give I unto thee in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, of Nazareth rise up and walk. Then later on, when they were brought before the kong, he said, why are you marveling? You men, are, why are you marveling as if by our own power or holiness, we made this man walk? No, it is Jesus Christ who made the man walk. What Peter and John refused to do is to steal the glory or to even glory that them or they of themselves did it. But we are a lot of do-it-yourselfers in religion today. A lot of do-it-yourself church today. We're doing it in the name of God, without the fire of God, without the spirit of God, without the glory of God. Are you hearing me? We are independent of God. We profess dependence on him, but we act independent of him and we impress a whole lot of people. But God is not impressed. 
because we are lukewarm. Another symptom of lukewarmness, they are manifestly wrong. Nevertheless, they flatter themselves that they are spiritually right. Do you know anybody like that? <laughs> the very fruit that is coming from the tree of their life shows that they are in a wrong, they're in a wrong state. They, they're in a wrong relationship. They are, they are condoning sin and, and compromise. They are living in rebellion against God's word. The evidence are clear to see, but even though they are manifestly wrong, they flatter themselves that they are spiritually right. There are some of us, we are either justified by God or we are self-justified. And self-justification can't cut it when it comes to God. Some of us deem ourselves as being righteous. Some of us trust God to make us righteous. The songwriter said, not our own righteousness, but Christ within living and reigning and saving from sin. But some of us are, we are self-righteous within because we read the Bible, even from Genesis to Revelation. If you read three chapters a day, God bless you. You might be like Daniel, you might have three intervals of prayer a day. But if you think that prayer and Bible reading can make up for willful, habitual sinning, amen, and rebelling against the principle of God's word, you have been duped indeed. Are you hearing me? And you are a pretender. You don't have any fire. You only sweat in it. But you don't have the fire within your heart. Oh, the church at Laodicea represents the apostate church of today. Falling away from godliness. Falling away from holiness. The spirit is outside of the church. Christ is outside of the church. Though we are calling his name and we are pretending that he is in our midst. He's outside begging to come in. Is he in your heart or is he outside begging to come into your life? Though you are religious, though you say prayers, though you give offerings, though you feed the poor and you help the needy, is Christ the center of your life? Oh, I'm feeling it. I'm feeling it, my brother. I'm feeling it, my sister. Interestingly, the background of the church at Laodicea, as we saw in the previous message, it always had something that depicted the state, the spiritual state of these Laodiceans. We're talking about they were diagnosed as being lukewarm. No, the, the city water temperature itself was a true replica of this apostate church. They were lukewarm. They, they, they had a nauseating effect. Amen. They made the stomach turn. That's what it means to be lukewarm. Are you hearing me? And it is said that they had a water problem in Laodicea. Yes, it was uh, piped in from miles away from Hierapolis or some other place. I think Colossae and one was cold, cold water. And by the time it got to La Odyssey, it was lukewarm, neither hot nor cold. One was hot water from Hierapolis. By the time it came six miles down to La Odyssey, it was lukewarm, neither hot nor cold. Could you imagine that? Wow. What a diagnosis. I would that you be hot or cold. But you are lukewarm. Maybe go thoroughly to the Lord's disgust. He said, you make me want to vomit. Since you are neither hot nor cold, I will spew thee out of thy mu my mouth. That's what the KGV says. The Message Bible says, you make me want to vomit. Ooh. You know, there's something that just turns your spirit. It turns your stomach. It makes you want to puke as you rebuke. You know what I'm talking about here. He says, I am about to spew you out of my mouth. The Lord utterly abhors the spiritual state of this church. There are certain states that God ain't going to stand at all. And one thing he don't like is pretense and hypocrisy. He ain't going to stomach it. Amen. The public commentary says, nothing is more offensive to him as a corpse in a religious cloak. Think about that. Oh, some of us have a testimony that we are alive, but we are dead. I'm coming to that down the road. But I can't preach everything one time, so I got to be disciplined. Are you hearing me? And the Lord was about to reject this church. But note, he said, I am about to spew, spew you out because I'm disgusted with you. No, no, God is forbearing. He is long-suffering. He will put up with us for a long time, but he will not put up with us always. Are you listening to me? But God was at the point of disgust with this church, and he said, except you repent, I'm going to vomit you out of my mouth. I'm going to reject you because you are distasteful. You are discomforting. 
you turn the stomach and except you repent, I got to reject you. Oh, my friend, he will not tolerate their nauseating state. I want to tell you, he will not put up with your dead, cold, dry religion. You either get the fire or he will reject you. Are you hearing me? So repent. Redo what you need to redo. Reform what you need to reform. Get right with God and get the fire of God so that your devotion can be pleasing unto him. Yes, he is disgust. When we pretend, when we play church, a lot of congregations today feel even a God, it, 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 you know, they have God's approval, but, but they have his disapproval. And I'm not knocking anybody, but sometimes we judge by the old, outward appearance. Let me remind you, God judged from the inside out. You remember when God sent Samuel to anoint one of the son of Jesse? And when he saw that big, tall, muscular guy, he said, surely this is the one. God said, don't look at him. I have rejected him for men look at the outward appearance, but I look at the heart. And David, he had no muscle. He had the figure that will pull your trigger. Are you hearing me? But he had the fire that moved God. For he had a heart of devotion for God. And God said, David was the one. Hallelujah. Yes, my friend. So we know the Lord's diagnosis. We know the Lord's desire. We know the Lord's disgust. Let's know the Lord's discipline in verse 19. He said, everyone I love, I discipline or I chasten them. Now, you see, this is, discipline is something people don't get used to because whenever you discipline people, they don't love me. Discipline people in the church for their wrongdoing or their rebellion, that church don't have any love. They go find another church. And at the moment the church gets on their case and discipline them, they move to another church. Stop your hopping grass. Hop out. Repent. Are you hearing me? Repent. Discipline. He said, my discipline flows out of my love for you. I discipline everyone I love. His discipline is corrective judgment. He said, as many as I love, I rebuke. I show you where you went wrong. I show you what's not right. And I show you that you need to get it right. You need to make some adjustment in your life. But we have some folks, let them come church, but don't tell them anything. That's why a lot of us like to hide behind crowds. Now, every preacher likes to have a crowd. I'm looking forward to have one one of these days. Don't misunderstand me. I ain't jealous of anybody that have a crowd, but a lot of people that hide in the crowd and they are not in the congregation of the called out. Are you hearing me? Yes, I discipline those that I love. God will give you corrective judgment to save you from destructive judgment. Think about that. His discipline is designed to bring about your conversion. To converse me to turn from and to turn to. Turn from your evil ways. Turn from your sinful ways. Turn from your cold indifference and turn to God. Turn from your lukewarmness. Oh, my friend, repent and return to the Lord knowing he will abundantly pardon. Hallelujah. The God word translation says, take this seriously and change the way you think and act. Oh, you thought you, you had it good, maybe because people sing in your praises. But the praises you need to hear is what God sings. And if God is silent, then you're in trouble and you need to check yourself out. Pop, society may sing our praise. Society may sing my praise. But if God is not pleased with me, I need to make some changes before he spew me out. Or vomit me out. Are you hearing me? He said, I must punish you unless you turn from your indifference and become enthusiastic about the things of God. That's the living Bible. And I like that, especially for young people, because young people got to be pushed like wheelbarrows. Lord have mercy, they're not any good at any, unless they are pushed. But you know, I could we could push a baby in a walker because they're a baby. But after a while, you come a big, big man or woman. And, well, you should be big. And you should be mature. We're still pushing. You know, we get tired of pushing. Oh, my friend, you can get the fire in you that will propel yourself onward. Are you hearing me? But young people, don't just follow the church coldly. You ever seen some half-dead looking young people in church? They're, they're waiting for the doxology. You said, you know, bless the Lord, oh, my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Are they waiting? Now may the saving grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. You can't wait to get out. Because you ain't got no fire in you. Are you hearing me? Don't be dead and dull and dry and look like a reprint of the book of Lamentation and chart. Get some joy. Get some fire. Get some glory about you. Serve God with enthusiasm, not with indifference. Some of us serve God, well, I ain't going to try because I ain't want to go to hell. But you ain't enjoying it. Something is wrong with your religion. 
Are you hearing me? I didn't come to make you feel bad, but even if you do, sometimes you have to feel bad before you feel good. For the feeling bad leads you to repentance and contrition that will bring about your conversion, that will bring about a revival in your heart. Let me close with the Lord's determined desire. He wants to have fellowship with you. He said, I've been outside knocking on your door for a long time in the 28th verse. He said, if you open up the door, I will come in. I will sup with you and you with me. Oh, my friend, God's determined desire is to enter your heart and reside there. God don't want to dwell in building, make with hands. He wants to dwell within your heart, within your life. Amen. He said, look, I've been standing at the door and I'm constantly knocking. But some of us so deaf we can't hear, so blind we can't see, and so numb we can't feel. How sad. Claiming to be in relationship with God, but Jesus on the outside begging to come in. You can't see him. You can't hear him. And even if you see and hear, you're paying him no mind. Oh, my friend, he said, I want to have intimate fellowship with you. I will come in and I will fellowship with you and you with me. Jesus said, I'd rather you hot or cold. But because you are lukewarm, I will spit you out of my mouth except you repent. Which of the three temperatures represent you? Are you hot or are you cold? And if you are neither hot nor cold, then what are you? You're lukewarm, you're indifferent, you're insipid, oh, you're distasteful, you're tipid, oh, you're nauseating, you're disturbing, and the master will not have fellowship with you. A humbling word, but my friends, humility and the fear of God will bring about revival and restoration. So if you're cold and indifferent and you lost the fire or you lack the fire, Repent, let me believe God with you to store the fire in your heart once again. Hallelujah, let me pray with you now. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for the word. I thank you for the clarity with which you allow it to be expressed and the unction behind of it. I thank you for every listening heart. Everyone knew, know themselves. Lord, help them to come to the reality of the, your diagnosis of their life, not people's diagnosis. You are the great physician. You know it all. We don't. Father, I pray for that one that have been lukewarm, that they will repent, they will return to you knowing you will abundantly pardon. I pray for that one that is cold to the point of freezing. I pray that they will turn to you, get connected with you, and that your fire will infuse them with the fire of your life of Christ, with the love of God, with the grace of God, and they will never be cold to the, to the freezing point again. But they will be hot to the boiling point, serving the Lord with enthusiasm. I pray you'll revive dead, cold churches. I pray that through repentance that they'll come alive and your fire will burn in them once again. This is my prayer in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm looking forward to hearing from you. You can send me an email and your take on the message, coghbb at gmail.com. Or you can dial the telephone, 284-494-1755 or 494-1355. Four, four. I'm looking forward to hearing from you. And of course, amen. Let JTV know you are thankful for this window of opportunity to get this revelational word that revolutionizes lives. Tell them thanks. And I'm so blessed to be on this station with you sharing God's wonderful word. Looking forward to being with you the next time. Until then, stay exposed to God's truth. It will set you free. Bye-bye.